What makes your storage, your, your battery solution different than some of the other offerings that are popping up here? Uh, so adding that flexibility to our customers is kind of what we're all about. But they're going to use it for self-consumption and for rate arbitrage. Could you explain a little bit about how your system supports that use case? Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming to you from InterSolar 2024, the International Solar Conference here in San Diego. And this afternoon I'm joined by Jason Higginson and Christopher Ling at AP Systems, and we're looking at the new AP Systems AP Storage solution. So gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, you know, of course, one of the reasons we're here at the show is to cover the latest solar and storage technology. Uh, and of course, one of the things that we're seeing this year compared to last year is that it seems that everybody has a battery now. I mean, I've seen dozens and dozens of new batteries with brands, many of the brands I haven't heard of before, um, but it seems that everybody wants to be part of the battery discussion. But we'd like to know AP Systems, uh, I th think most people know you for the microinverter, the dual channel microinverters, but tell us about the AP storage solution and what makes your storage, your, your battery solution different than some of the other offerings that are popping up here? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. It's an exciting part of our new uh, residential product line for solar. Uh, we kind of approach this with, uh, you know, there's a lot of players in the market. Uh, there's also a lot of great uh, battery companies, battery technologies out there. So we're we're coming to the market with, hey, we, uh, we are a power conversion uh, manufacturer. We did that on our microinverters. We're experts in that. So let's partner with uh, the best of the batteries out there. We obviously, we have a battery, our AP battery, that is a branded solution that we can provide. But if you have a preference, the installer has a preference, the homeowner has a preference, I want to use home grid, I want to use Fortress, I want to use another partner. Uh, we have an energy storage uh, solution for that. So our battery inverter, this is the 5K uh, ELS, it's our power conversion system, PCS, that uh, will will charge and discharge uh, from our battery or uh, another battery. So we produced uh, a battery agnostic inverter uh, for that purpose, to really add some flexibility into the market. Yeah, Jason, I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm actually surprised to hear that because, because the trend that we're seeing is that these systems are becoming more proprietary, where you have to have the inverter, the battery, the app, in some cases the load control, everything on one brand. We're not really seeing inter interoperability, or at least I think that's what the majority of companies are doing. Why, why did AP Systems remain committed to having more of an open architecture with interoperability between batteries? It's exactly like you said, so a lot of them become more proprietary, uh, specific to their own platform, and uh, what happens when you do that is you, you close doors to uh, other solutions, other technologies, and, uh, and we really wanted ours to, uh, to be more flexible in, in, in a market where uh, it's becoming more and more siloed. Uh, so adding that flexibility to our customers is kind of what we're all about. Great, great. Well, I know our audience is going to have a lot of questions about the technical specifications of the product, so let's jump into that next. Okay, Chris, so let's let's kind of roll up our sleeves here and explain how the technology actually works. So first off, I, I'm looking at what I believe to be the inverter unit and then the storage unit, which could be AP systems or could be a third-party battery provider. But for the audience, first of all, just kind of walk them through the major components, what functions do they do, and then let's talk about um, specifications. Yeah, absolutely. So what we have here, this is called the ELS 5K. Uh, or another name, uh, it's a PCS or power conversion system. Another word for it can also be a battery inverter. Uh, it basically acts as a bi-directional AC-DC uh, inverter and be able to take a DC battery to convert it to push power to the grid or it can take power from the grid to charge the battery. So once again, it's an, uh, the bi-directional AC-DC uh, system. It is paired with a DC battery um, and as you had mentioned, it can be our own white labeled battery or a third party battery. Uh, it can be connected through uh, CAN or RS45 communication and then the DC leads feed into the battery inverter as well. Um, and uh, in terms of how you go about connecting the system, uh, this is a uh, this is a five kilowatt uh, output. So in generally, it's good for critical load systems. So you would connect this to a main service panel, and then you have a separate sub panel uh, that it would back up five kilowatts to. Excellent. And now, in terms of the battery storage, is is there a limit to how many battery storage components can be connected to a single battery inverter? Yeah, so in general, be it's dependent on the batteries that you work with. Um, so for example, with batteries with home grids, 
uh, you can basically stack different modules and then and home grid is the one that determines how many batteries that you can put. Uh, for our white label batteries, uh, it's also dependent on that battery's uh, communication protocol. So um, in general, the main thing to check is to see, is check the battery manufacturer to see how many batteries they allow uh, to parallel. Uh, for our white label batteries, we typically see uh, for a five kilowatt uh, system with one, one five kilowatt power uh, system that you would have two five kilowatt hour batteries, so for a total of 10 uh, kilowatt hours. So five kilowatts, usually 10 kilowatt hours. And that five kilowatt power, is that is that output to the loads or is that also represent how much solar input can come in? Yeah, so uh, five kilowatts is going to be output to the loads. Uh, it also corresponds to how much can be charged uh, from solar as well. Typically we say that if you can do uh, so, the, so I'm slightly oversimplifying, but for a five kilowatt PCS, you can put, uh, we typically put a factor of 1.25 for the AC-DC ratio. So we typically say for a five kilowatt uh, system, you can do uh, 6.25 kilowatts of off-grid solar. Um, that's if you want to do off-grid solar, you are also free to put other, uh, you can put more solar on the main service side. Um, that will allow you to have that uh, more solar power to charge the system if needed. But basically you can get 6.25 uh, kilowatts of solar. Excellent, excellent. Now, we talked about the backup power application. How does this technology fit in with, right now we're in California, we're in NEM 3.0 territory, right? So a lot of folks are going to be using the battery storage not just for um, backup power, but they're going to use it for self-consumption and for rate arbitrage. Could you explain a little bit about how your system supports that use case? Yeah, that's absolutely right. So, um, Joe, as you very much said, it's very important uh, that you have to that our application is able to handle self-consumption mode, uh, which is something that we can do. So, um, the so there are three modes that the homeowner can set for the system. Uh, the first mode is backup mode, where you basically the main priority is to keep the grid as uh, keep the battery as full as possible, so that when you lose the grid and you have a grid outage, you have maximum battery. The second mode is like you said, uh, self-consumption mode, where the main priority is to try to limit the grid as much, try to limit grid usage as much as possible. So um, when you when you have uh, when you have solar, it will be able to charge off of solar. And then when you don't have solar, and then you will also be able to use the battery to power the lows within your home. Um, and then the third option is um, we call it advanced mode, but I also like to call it time of use mode, where you set the hours of when the grid is expensive and when the grid is cheap, so that you're able to. Uh, so that the system will be able to determine when the grid is expensive. It tries not to charge from the grid and try to use solar instead. But when the grid is cheap, then it will pull from the grid to charge the system instead. And this is all, sorry, and this is all settable uh, through the app of, that the, of the homeowner and the installer can do it as well. Great, great. Well, folks, you know, this is really what we're seeing now. Storage is part of the solar solution, and, and in some cases, we're even seeing that the, the electric vehicle charging becomes part of this, this home energy system as well. But um, I think if you're a homeowner now, especially a homeowner watching this in California, considering solar, you know, understanding how the battery will allow you to get the most out of your solar investment is, is another part of the, the configuration. And frankly, a lot of what we're here covering uh, are these new, new battery technologies that are coming online. Um, Chris, is there anything else that the audience should know about the AP storage solution? Uh, one thing I also want to mention is that because we have a AP storage uh, solution, if you were to have the AP Systems microinverters as well, uh, you'll be able to manage everything through the through the uh, we call the EMA app. So on your phone, you'll be able to manage both the microinverters on your roof, and also you'll be able to see your storage solution as well. In fact, you can actually download the EMA app. Uh, on either uh, the Apple Store or Google Play, and you'll be able to see a demo of this app. So you can use that to play around, see what it's like to be a homeowner or an end user on how to use the storage and the micros on the roof. Um, and you'll be able to see there's a lot of really information, really interesting information that you can get from the app. Great. Great, yeah, I know if you're anything like me, the first month or so you have your system online, you're going to be on the app, on the control panel the whole time, just kind of checking out what the system is doing, and it's, it's really, really neat to have that. 
Well, folks, this has been a brief introduction to the AP storage solution that's part of AP Systems, uh, the microinverter company. They've got their uh, storage battery and storage inverter now as well. Uh, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos here on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. That's just going to tell YouTube to show the video to more people. Uh, and also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, that way, as we have new videos like this coming out, covering the new products and product developments in the space, you can stay up to date with everything that's going on. Well, we thank you all for spending some more time with Solar Surge today. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.